Hi, I'm Dr. Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my Problem Solving Techniques course. In this lesson, we're going to learn about Pareto analysis. So what are our objectives for this lesson? And so at the end of the lesson, we should be able to do the following. First of all, describe what is meant by Pareto analysis. Then we want to know when to use Pareto analysis and use a step-by-step -step procedure to draw, draw a Pareto chart. We then want to identify the critical few from the trivial many. This is the main thing that we want to do in Pareto analysis. And finally, we want to use the results of Pareto analysis to gain insights into which problems should be prioritized. So we're in section two of our course here, where we want to identify priorities for improvement. There may be many things that need to be improved, but we need to know which ones to tackle first and which are the most important ones to tackle. Within this section, we have three techniques and the first of these is Pareto analysis, the subject of this lesson. So as usual in our lessons, let's start off with a quote. This one is from Elizabeth Moon, who is a science fiction and fantasy writer. And she once wrote, it's all knowing what to start with. If you start in the right place and follow all the steps, you will get to the right end. So we need to know where to start. What are our priorities? What do we need to tackle first? So what is Pareto analysis? Well, first of all, it's named after an Italian, Vilfredo Pareto, who was an economist in the early 20th century. And he, he observed that 80% um, of the wealth in Italy belonged to 20% of the population, and he developed the Pareto principle based on this. And it's often called the 80-20 rule, and sometimes the ABC rule as well. It's not a strict number, 80-20 uh, is common, but also 70-30, um, 75, 25, 90, 10, whatever value, you, whatever numbers you choose, but for, the, for now, stick with the 80, 20 rule. And this leads us to come up with the concept that 80% of the trouble is due to 20% of the causes. So if we have a lot of difficulties or a lot of problems, perhaps the Pareto principle applies, and therefore we need to know what the 20% of the causes are. We want to ignore the 80% and focus on the 20%. We can use a Pareto chart to display what we call the critical few from the trivial many causes of a problem. So we need to know those critical few so that we can prioritize those for solutions. And the Pareto chart then shows us the cumulative percentage for each cause. So we have Vilfredo Pareto to thank for this particular analysis. We can apply Pareto analysis to almost anything from the science of management to the physical world. For example, here's some examples. 20% of your inventory takes up 80% of your warehouse space. If that happened, you'd need to be managing that 20% very, very carefully. 80% of your inventory comes from 20% of your suppliers. So who are those critical suppliers? 80% of a company's income is generated by 20% of its customers. So therefore, identifying those 20% of customers are the most important ones that you want to look after. A final example here is 80% of a company's business might be generated by 20% of the sales team. So that uh, low number there of 20% of the sales team, they're the sales uh, uh, men and women who you want to um, um, look after the best. So when do we use Pareto analysis? Well, obviously we want to use it to prioritize potential causes of a problem. We use it to establish and verify the cause and effect of a problem. This is, this is important too. We need to really, really understand where the problems are coming from. And it also tell, teaches us to reach a consensus on what needs to be addressed first. This then leads us to identify the improvement opportunities, and we can also use it to measure success of corrective action. So how do we do uh, a Pareto analysis and create a Pareto chart? Well, first of all, we've got to identify the data source. So we might, for example, use things like check sheets to record data or record errors or record faults uh, in a process. And then we work out the percentage totals uh, for of each type of defect. And we can use these totals to draw a Pareto chart. So a Pareto chart usually, I like the one we see here on the right-hand side, uh, shows a cumulative line. And that's the line we see across the top here that I'm pointing at now. And it accumulates up to, obviously, 100%. We designate the left and the right and the right vertical scale. So on the left here, we have the actual frequency of, of defects, for example. And on the right-hand side, we go from 0 up to 100%. And we can see here A, B, C, and D, and so on. These are the names of defects. So straight away, I can see that defect A, uh, which is, has the highest value 
also has quite a high percentage and it drops off. So this is a typical Pareto type curve that you see here. And finally, we construct the cumulative line. So let's take a look at an example to show how the Pareto principle can help us in our problem solving techniques. In the case here, I've got some data, recorded some data using check sheets uh, on different types of complaints that are occurring in a hotel. And we can see the number of complaints, let's say this is over the peri a period of a month or three months or a quarter or whatever, the number of complaints that are occurring for each category are recorded on the, on the table in the right hand side here. Now we don't need to be a genius to figure out that the um, fourth option here, room service, and followed by reservations and cleaning down at the bottom, that these are the three um, highest numbers of complaints overall and these would clearly need to be tackled first. So we know that these are the most important ones, but let's put some data and let's put some structure on identifying these as the priorities for improvement. So I just moved the uh, table over here to the left hand side and on the right, using Excel, I have constructed the um, Pareto chart for the room complaints problem. You can see here that I've got my room service uh, and the table tells me that there's 287 values. So I've got a bar here that has the highest number of values. The actual value is 287, followed by reservations, followed by cleaning. And we've got all the other different types of complaints right down here. So these ones on the left hand side are the diamond of the, of the diagram, are the critical few. And then the ones towards the middle on the right hand side are regarded as the trivial many. They may still be uh, um, um, serious problems and might uh, use up a lot of energy to fix, but you don't want to spend a lot of time. For example, let's take a look at decor. There was only two complaints about decor over the period of time. Um, so we don't want to focus our efforts on improving the decor uh, when we could be um, tackling room service instead. So trivial, um, trivial few on the right hand, the critical few on the left and the trivial many on the middle and the right hand side. And we can see our cumulative line goes up right up to 100%. And if we can see 80% and go right across here, we can see that our first three uh, issues here, three uh, complaint types, these account for approximately 80% um, of up to all complaints. So therefore, in this case, the Pareto principle applies. And it teaches us, not surprisingly, to tackle room service, reservations, and cleaning first. And then what do we do? Well, I'm highlighting room service here on the left-hand side because this has got the highest number. It could, um, takes up um, over 40% of the total number of complaints. And rather than just tackling room service on its own, I've gone and done another study here using check sheets to uh, figure out the types of complaints within room service. So you can see that we've got delays in delivery, reduced menu, food too cold, drinks too warm, and so on. And I've documented the number of complaints for each of these. So it's not as obvious in this case here, of what the, the, the critical few are. So let's go ahead then and uh, I've plotted um, the burrito chart for the difficulties in room service. And you can see here I've got a similar chart as before. I've got the actual number of complaints on the left hand axis and the percentage on the right hand side with my cumulative bar going up across the top here. And I've got the, each of the complaint types listed across the bottom. Now, if I look for 80% uh, here on the right-hand side and work my way across, we can see that um, um, four, maybe five complaints um, out of all of these here account for 80%. So in this case, the 80-20 rule does, doesn't apply uh, because 80%, um, um, about half of the, about half of the uh, issues here make up 80%. So the Pareto principle is not going to apply. But nevertheless, we can use it to focus in here on the left hand side, if we want to reduce the number of uh, complaints for room, room service, the ones that we should tackle first are the ones here on the left hand side. So delays in delivery and reduced menu and food too cold, if we tackle those uh, before, for example, um, untidy trays and wrong charge to a bill and others complaints and so on, we can help reduce the overall number of complaints for room service much more efficiently. So the Pareto principle, whether it works out at 80-20 or 70-30 or whatever number that you use, teaches us to focus in on the critical few. So that's how you use Pareto analysis. And the assignment for this lesson, which follows, um, I want to get you to look at, use the Pareto principle to look at a DIY, do-it-yourself warehouse inventory analysis. And we've got some data here, fictitious data that I have made up uh, with prices for each of the items in a DIY store. 
our annual sales, the level of inventory in the warehouse, and the reorder quantity. And what I want to do is I'm going to use usage value, which is the um, um, unit price and annual sales, multiply those by each other to get usage value, and then figure out have I got the correct um, inventory? Have I, you know, not enough, too high, too many? Reorder quantity, should that need to be changed? So in other words, I'd like to have high inventory and a good reorder quantity for the uh, items on the left-hand side with the highest usage value. So that's going to be in our assignment uh, which follows this lesson. So in summary, the Pareto principle is based on the 80-20 rule. We can use a Pareto chart uh, to give us our cumulative percentages. And this chart then can help us identify the critical few from the trivial many. So therefore, this makes this a very useful prioritization technique to show which problems should be tackled or addressed first. So that's how you use Pareto analysis for problem solving. I hope you found this lesson useful. Thank you for your attention.